Thanks, everyone. Um, I know it's been a pretty, uh, this is a unique uh, media conference for an All Black head coach before the, a test. And, uh, but clearly we've given you plenty to talk about this week. So um, you probably owe us one for that. So look, it's been a clearly a, a very different week, a few disruptions, but um, at the end of the day, in two days time, we've got a start of a pretty special um, series we've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, massive respect for the Irish and, and and what they've achieved in world rugby the last couple of years and the chance to have them on our shores is, um, is something pretty special. We felt like we've been away from home a long time as an all-black team, so to, to play in front of our friends and family here is um, something we're looking forward to. So um, clearly you've seen the team. I'll just give you a little bit of an overview and then, then take whatever questions you like. It's, uh, you know, there's um, first and foremost, I, I guess a, a congratulations to, to Lester on his, on his first cap. Um, well earned, played so well during Super Rugby. Um, and, you know, his versatility is, is, has been a key factor, but the fact uh, you know, he's confident, runs hard and fast and and just wants to play and get the ball in his hands. And we're excited by that. Can't wait to see him play. And also the chance for for Peter Gus to, through the, through the bench again, um, had a slightly different path to the All Blacks, but fantastic opportunity for him. And, uh, you know, he's trained well, he's excited, he's got a beautiful smile on his face and I know he'll bring a lot of energy. So that's just a congratulations to, to the two new boys. And um, I'll probably leave all the rest of the questions for you guys to ask me and people to ask me. So get stuck right. into it. Yep, we'll start with who wants to start. Yeah, Elliot. Elliot Smith um, over on the yep. right, or your left, Foz, probably. Thanks. Hi, uh, Ian. Uh, first and foremost, how does how do you help? Hope you're doing well. Oh, I appreciate you asking, Elliot. I'm very good, thank you. It's um, had a couple of dusty days at the start, but it's... Uh, um, settled into things pretty well and uh, feeling really good. Looking forward to uh, it, looking forward to joining the team on Saturday morning. So that was my next question. So you will be on site on, on Saturday for the game? Well, as long as things go well uh, and I stay the way I'm staying, the answer to that's yes. Um, Scott Barrett on the blind side flanker. What's the, the motivation behind that? First time you started there since the uh, semi final in the in the World Cup. What, what's the thinking behind that? Yeah, first time he started for us there, but he's he's filled in a couple of times. He's also played for the Crusaders there. We, we know he can do it. Um, we feel that, uh, like, he's one of the form players of Super Rugby in the last four to six weeks. Um, he's on top of his game. We've got Akira who, you know, when he came in, you know, hit, we, we discovered that his foot was a bit sorer than perhaps what we thought and he'd been playing, you know, and he, and he looked like that we thought in the playoff games. And so it's a chance for him just to have another week to, to make sure he's jumping out of his skin. And, and in the same way, the same applies for Dalton. It's um, his, uh, you know, he's, he, he's got a great attitude. He's, he's nearly at a hundred percent, but he's not quite there. So we just felt it was the right way to utilize those, those two uh, to use Scott Barrett for this test and give those two another opportunity to to get back to 100. Just lastly, from me, before I hand it over, how many times have you had to redo the team sheet this week given the issues? <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, and that's uh, and that's just with the management team, uh, Elliot. It's um, and look, it's been clearly it's been in, it's it's been intriguing, but it's um. That is what it is, uh, and quite frankly, we've kind of been used to this over the last couple of years. But this this is a little bit of a unique week for us. But you know, wow, we, you know, we're we're excited with the team that we're putting out there. They, you know, we we it doesn't change the fact that that the statement that we want to make on the first test of the year. It's it's always been a tricky one for us coming in. You know, after tough Super teams, where our teams generally are always in the finals, and it's. And you've got to sort of bandage people up, charge them up and, and get them organised in a quick period. But, you know, the, the people on the ground and, and those of us on Zoom, I think, have done a really good job of that and, and we're ready to go. Cool. Okay, Ollie in the middle. Ollie Ritchie in the middle. Foz? Yep. Hey, Ollie, hope you're well. Um, just on your absence this week and your, your other coaches' absence, how much input have you guys been able to have on the team? And can you give us an idea of 
of what those conversations have sort of looked like and how you've been able to help a team uh, from your isolation? Um, oh, lots of different ways, really. It's, you know, a lot of the planning has obviously been done um, in the previous couple of months. We've, we, we had a camp last week um, up north that we bedded in a, a number of things that we really wanted to do. And, and you know, quite frankly, it's, um, you know, people are getting used to communicating and being communicated to by Zoom. So it's uh, something that, you know, we talked about may happen. Um, I didn't really want it to be me that got sniped at first, but that's the way that it worked. But it's been it's been great. It's shown a you know a lot of had a lot, a lot of faith and trust in the coaches on the ground that have been really well led by Brad um, and, and Fiki. We've got you know the coaches on Zoom have done a great job. It hasn't been easy preparing a, a test team from home and. You know, I probably got to apologise to my wife for my behaviour the last four days, but it's um, you know, really the between that and, and the and the attitude and and the rolling the sleeves up attitude of our leaders, I, I think, you know, we've just done it collectively. So hey, it's not the way we plan, but it doesn't mean it can't be equally as effective. Well, just back on Scott at Sticks, he hasn't played there a lot lately, um, as has been touched on already. Do you do you look back on? The 2019 performance, what worked, what didn't work with the move to, to Scott at Blindside ahead of this week? Oh, look, I didn't, didn't spend uh, too long thinking about the 2019 game, um, but it's, you know, we we took some lessons from that, but I think they've, they've been, they, were, they were learned a long time ago. So this one, you know, we're very clear about the strategy and it's, it's something that we've talked before to, with Scott about, about this possibility. Um, Let's and if we look at the positives of it, you know, and like he's apart from his set piece acumen, which he, we know how good he is in that space, he also he's bringing a, a bruising defence and ball carrying part to his game now. In fact, you know, it's probably our our most dynamic lock ball carrier at the moment, and so I think we can utilise that a little bit at six. So there's some things that you know, even if you sit down with Scott and talk to him about it, he finds a lot of the roles very similar now, except for a couple of defensive tweaks, which we've had to make sure we tidy up. Okay, next questions. Yep. Okay, yep. at the back, Andrew Stable's right at the back, don't know whether you can see him, Paul. Yeah, I can see, Sam. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, you, you're looking <laughs> and sounding okay, Ian, but has it been, has it set you on your backside for a few days? Uh, look, it's one of those ones that's pretty lucky, really. I think the first two nights were, cold sweats and and uh sleepless nights so that's pretty normal for a, an all-black head coach for the first test of the year so i wasn't quite sure whether i was sick or nervous but it's um no we're look i i i've actually got through it pretty lightly to be fair and you know maybe been a, a little bit distracted with something else on my mind to get ready has, has helped me and um but overall you know the people around particularly in the team and the management, they've done a superb job and given me, made sure that I had enough time to rest in, in between things, so it's gone well. Have you been a bit grumpy? You mentioned your wife before. Well, rumour has it, I don't believe it myself. <laughs> um, has, has the silver lining been, it's given Brad uh, quite a big chance to take the reins, if you like? Oh, I think it's been fantastic. You know, like I think, you know, he's, he's, um, he, he's led things really, really well on the ground. It's been, um, um, you know, great opportunity for him to, to, I guess, increase his voice. But, um, you know, that's kind of what you expect. We've, we've had processes around that. He's a really capable coach. And, and you know, alongside, alongside you know, still the likes of Greg Feek and, David Hill, our kicking coach, has filled in, and so is Andrew Strawbridge. Our, our, our skills consultants end up becoming a little bit more than that this week. So we've had people on the ground that have been able to, who have known what our plan was, who have been part of our conversations for the last two or three months, who have been able to go and implement it. So really delighted for them. So if you keep testing negative, you'll drive up Saturday, or what's the plan? Yeah, unless you want to send a helicopter down, it'll definitely be by car. Okay, can we just go to uh, Liam Napier in the middle there? Sorry, Sam, we'll come okay. back to you. Hi, Liam. And, uh, how, much, how much did you take out of um, Wednesday night's match, the Māori All Blacks Island 
oh, first of all, big congratulations to the Maori. I thought it was a great performance. And, you know, they um, they did themselves proud last night and, uh, you know, delighted with some of the individual performances in, in that particular team. So that, that was exciting and it sort of sets up the tour really, really well and kind of just lets the... And it sort of set a bit of a bar, so I'm excited by that. I mean, what did we learn, you know, a, a little bit... Um, there were some things that the Irish did that we would be expecting them to do. There's some things that looked a very, very different to what they, what we would be expecting them to do this Saturday. And, and probably, you know, the, the names of the Irish players were probably, if, if New Zealand rugby fans were, were honest, there's probably weren't too many of their players that they probably knew the names of. It was a, obviously a lot of younger players and you can see what, Faz is trying to do. He's trying to trying to build depth, and you know, you know, they wanted that game for this reason. So, I'm sure that they've got a lot out of that. But um, I do know that the the guys sitting in the grandstand probably represent a slightly different challenge. And just in terms of your front row selections, I know you spent a bit of time trying to get the balance right between uh, mobility and, and set piece. Um, yeah, how much do you think you've got that balance right, and how much time did you spend on on those selections? You know, we're happy with the selection. It's, um, you know, it's uh, just so, so, you know, I'm not sure what, what you know about Nepo, but we've we've basically counted Nepo out of this week because of he's been playing with a, a sore neck the last three or four weeks and, and it still is ongoing and we just felt it was time to intervene. So we've we'd given him three or four days off just to really, to make sure that that neck comes right and hopefully he'll be jumping out of his skin for next week. So that's, that's kind of in some ways made the selection a bit easier. By the way, we've got Tyrell Lomax coming up lunchtime today just to fill in um, in case we need someone over the next two days. But but overall happy, I think, you know, if you look at Offer, he's um, was probably the, 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 the form prop in New Zealand for the first 80% of the Super Rugby. And then he, you know, he, he had a couple of glitches at the end, which he, he would have learned a lot about. Um, and... But we've got a lot of faith in him. And, you know, he's, he's mobile, he's big. Um, George Bauer, I think, just got better and better over the last two years. And and then with the likes of Carl, it's a chance for us to utilise him again off the bench. We're, we're delighted with where he's at. He's, a, he's in a good spot. And, and I know he wants to really contribute to, to this team in the next two or three weeks. Yep, Melissa. Buongiorno, Ian. Um, Buongiorno. I know, uh, I know that in Europe, uh, this series is uh, probably the series that everybody has eyes on for what happened in the past between the All Blacks and Ireland. I would like to know how much is uh, uh, there is pressure, excitement, but also motivation into this thing to do well, considering the, the last encounters against Ireland for the All Blacks. Can I just check that question? How much are we under pressure How because of the last result? Is that excitement and motivations and also pressure for your team to perform against Ireland, considering that everybody has eyes on this particular series, on this particular test? Yeah, look, I think there's always pressure. There's you know, a lot of people sitting around you in the room have put us under a lot of pressure the last three or four months because of that Ireland game. So it's... Um, you know, like we, we lose tests, we always have um, those those last two hurt a lot last year. But you know, we, we're beaten by two better teams on the day, so we've just got to show that we we can learn and grow through that. So you know, we've been working hard in that space. We've you know we haven't had the, the probably the time to actually get everything entrenched in, in how we like it, but really delighted with the progress and and some of the things that we're coming up with. So. Um, it's a great series for us. We, we like the pressure of the series. I, I said for the last couple of months, I think it's ideal for us to have three tests against Ireland. We normally we normally uh, don't get a chance to play the top Northern Hemisphere teams to, to November. And, and we have to sort of try to change our game accordingly in the last part of the year when maybe we're a little bit fatigued, whereas this time we've got a chance to test ourselves over three weeks as at a develop when, when we're still developing our game. So it gives us a real good scope for learning. Okay, last couple of questions before you lose your voice, Paul. Is 
Uh, Ian, is, is the Scott Barrett move something you've been thinking about for some time? Is it just for Ireland? The way he played at the table <coughs> for the Crusaders was obviously outstanding. Is it, is it something you've been thinking about for a while? Uh, yep. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, it's been in, in our mind, um, you know, and it's the the fact that he that he can play six, he plays it well, um, and means that we're we're pretty excited about the move. We don't just see it as just as a stopgap measure. It's probably been sped up a little bit with with uh, like I said before, with Akir and Dalton and the, and the niggles I've had. That's made that decision a little bit easier for us to make, but. Again, it's a, another one that we are really interested in doing. You know, to have a, a third big ball to have a big ball carrier in, in those loose forwards who works hard, who has a considerable uh, contribution to set piece, gives us good options. And you know, does it is it going to be perfect? Well, we'd like it to be, but there may be a few teething issues. But we we've got a lot of faith in in Scott and the work he's done and, and the work done by the coaches. So uh, uh, look, looking forward to seeing it unfold. All right, guys, we'll wrap up there. Anything else, Foz, or we'll let you go? Well, I don't think there's anything else I've missed. Oh, I have missed one thing. Um, uh, Greg Feek's got COVID as of this morning. And so as of tomorrow, Mike Cron will join us for the week that Cron, uh, Feeky won't be there. So the, the turntable keeps on going.